Oh, hi there. Welcome to the Ground Noise and another Vital Tutorial. Vital is a phenomenal and free virtual synthesizer everybody must have. And this time we will cover mostly wavetables. What are wavetables? How can you create them? What are they good for? How can you use them? As well as a few other options and functions you can find in Vital. So let's start. As you can see, I'm working in Cubase, but that doesn't matter because Vital works in other DAWs as well. I've just added an instrument track here and loaded uh, the instrument. You can do this in this field and you can open the actual instrument with this button or with this button. This looks way more interesting than the stuff we did in the first tutorial. I leave a link here in the info card and also in the show notes. You might want to check that video out. If you have no idea how synthesizers work and you want to learn how to make the first steps, not only in Vital, but in general in, in software synthesizers. So when I play this sound for you, you will see that a lot is going on. Everything is moving and modulating. Also, it sounds really good. Such living and breathing sounds can be done with wavetables. So, let's see what wavetables are. But first, let's load the default preset so that we can start from sketch. You can do that with this menu here and initialize preset. I also load some basic shapes. You find them under factory basic shapes here. And you know from my first video that we can use this slider to slide or switch through all these basic shapes. So far so good. But what if we put all these shapes on one table <laughs> so that they can connect with each other. We can visualize that with this button here, 2D. One click to change it to 3D and you can see what happened. I can now use this slider to move kind of fluently through all these shapes, but they would still switch from one to another. There is no transition between them, but we will change that in a minute. Can you see this little pencil symbol here? Let's click on it and this is the wavetable editor. Right now we look at the sine wave that was the first wave in our basic shapes and we can move this timeline to see the other shapes popping up in the background and we don't need them because we want to create our own wavetable now. We just remove all these keyframes here with a right click and we go back to our first frame and activate it to see what's going on. Now this is an interactive grid and you can change the grid side with these buttons here. I keep it as it is and now I can start to draw a new wave shape into this editor by simply connecting these dots. Just like that. You can really go crazy, try it out, maybe something like that. Ah, oh, here's a little bit missing. Go a little further. So, it sounds a bit sharper, not too special, but that's not the point of this tutorial to create the perfect sound. You can also try to change the harmonic information here by adding, for example, a randomizer. Right click and randomize. <laughs> you see, as a lot more of distortion going on here. Let's go with it. Just play a note and uh, see what all the changes can do. Aha. So I've made a new starting point of our wavetable. What we now need is an end point. So let's go to the last keyframe here in the editor and add a new keyframe, create keyframe with the right click. And now we start to manipulate this last keyframe. So far it's the same as the first. You see there's no movement at all. So after a while I've created this weird sound. It's weirdly wobbling here. 
but it doesn't matter. Let's see how it looks in our 3D table here. Very nice, but you see, we still have one problem. It doesn't transform nice and smooth into the other wave. And that's kind of pointless. So let's go back to the editor and change this setting here from none to waveform blend. You can move the timeline here to see that something has happened nice and smoothly. And that is exactly what this slider does. And now you can see that we have created a very basic wavetable. And you can hear what it does when I play a note and move that slider. This way we can add movement to our sound. And if you have seen my first tutorial, you already know that we can use an LFO to animate any parameters here. But this time we will not use an LFO, we will use a randomizer. Yes, randomizers are generally a good idea when you are making experimental sounds or ambient moving sounds that don't move so much on the beat, kind of doing their own thing. So I just need to connect the random one here with our slider, but this time to make it more interesting for you, uh, I will give the slider a new starting position, not uh, right on the ground here, but in the middle. So when we play a note, I want uh, that it first sounds like the middle position. Now I connect random one, just drag it to the slider. And you can see we have an extra button here. This is how we can set up the, the value, the, the impact of the randomizer. We will try it out, don't worry. Uh -huh. You can see the randomizer is working, doing its own thing. And of course, you can also change the algorithm that powers the uh, randomizer from Perlin to sample and hold, for example, sine, interpolate, Lorentz extractor. That's up to you. Try it out and see what it can do. I stay with Perlin. And you can see there's here's another button. It's the same button like here. So we can manipulate that from all kind of different places. But you notice one thing, right? We start like we wanted in the middle here, but the randomizer only puts our signal into one direction. You see that? The lower part has never be played and that's not what, what we want, right? That's something you want to do when your start position is, for example, right at the bottom. Now it goes only in this direction. You can change the amount. But our start position is in the middle, right? So what can we do? I bring it back to the middle and right click on this button and make bipolar. Something you don't want to have in real life, I guess. You can see that it goes in both directions. We are not done yet. I have still some more things to show you. But first I wanted to ask you, are you happy? Are you happy with this video? Uh, do you enjoy it? Please let me know in the comments. Start writing a comment right now. Send it later. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to read it. Also consider subscribing to the channel, not only to support the channel, but also because I have a long list of really good ideas for future projects. And you can be a part of it. Wouldn't that be cool? But now let's go back to our vital wavetable project. In the meantime, I've pimped up our little sound here, added an another oscillator, an envelope, also send an LFO to a filter. But we covered all that in the first tutorial already, so we don't need to waste any more of our precious time here. This is how it sounds right now. And you know, uh, there's one problem. When you apply filters and stuff, it can happen that the sound gets quieter and quieter over time. Of course, you can always change the levels of the oscillators here, but an even better way is to uh, change the master volume with this slider. I bring it up a little. That's okay. Very good to know is that you can connect all the envelopes, LFOs and randomizers 
not to only one parameter, but to many parameters. For example, we also connect the randomizer that is already connected to our first oscillator, also to the second oscillator. Now we have a second button here, where we can change it or change it directly here. Oh, I love it. You can hear that it's sometimes... What else? Ha, I have another idea. What about the modulation wheel of our MIDI keyboard? So far, it doesn't do anything. All you hear is uh, only the randomizer and, and filter opening of the LFO. But the modulation wheel isn't connected. But we change that right now. I want to connect the modulation wheel here with the LFO frequency so that I can change the tempo of the LFO. But in order to do that, it's better to change this setting here from the actual tempo to seconds. And I also make the default setting a little bit slower. Let it go like, like a second or something. That'll do. And now I can connect the mod wheel with the frequency just by dragging it. And you can see, as soon as I start dragging that mod wheel field, it shows you, shows you all the places I can go to. For example, I cannot, cannot go to trigger or purlin, but to frequency. Yes, it works, but it's still a little bit extreme. So can, we can bring down the slider here, maybe like 250 or something. Let's just try it. Yeah, why not? I think it's cool. Two more things, but first let's talk about what we did so far. We've created a wavetable from scratch, then applied a randomizer to it and learned that bipolar is a good thing, actually, here in Vital at least. And then we even connected the mod wheel of our MIDI keyboard, in this case with an LFO, but there would be other options as well. But the most important thing I show you right now, of course you want to save not only your preset, you can do it with this button here and give it a name, something like that, and click save. But you can also save the actual wavetable so that you can use it in other projects and other presets as well. Just right click on the preset here and save to wavetables. Then it will appear in this menu right here under user and there it is. Now, I hope you have more fun and a better understanding of how to create your own wavetable in Vital and this video could help you with that. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like before you go and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye bye. Vital is a no, uh, you might want to check it out if in especially uh, What else? Ha, I have an idea. Okay, bin ich am aufnehmen. Doch, ich bin am aufnehmen. Thank you.